And that was so that they could see a spike in the audio um, to match everything up. But Final Cut, literally, if I just say, hey, how's it going? It's going to listen to that and this and say, hey, how's it going? Oh, no. Those match. Oh, dude, it's so good. So insane. It's so good. Technology Techno- is insane. I, I love it, dude. I love it. <laughs> insane. And even when I know that you got into, because um, I think there was some hesitation with definitely a lot of tattoo artists, the iPad Pro. Yes. I remember with George there was. He was not. Very was not. Yeah, he was like, oh, no, no, it's traditional, true. traditional, which is cool. But then when you see that as a tool, you're like, fuck, this is so good. Yeah. It's yeah. so easy. I, 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 I wanted to do, I was first introduced to that with like the Wacom or the Wa- yeah. Wacom. Wa- I think it's Wacom. 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 Yeah. Wacom. Um, and then the iPad Pro came out, and then I started watching videos comparing them. Yeah. And all these graphic designers were steering towards the iPad Pro. Yeah. And it just blew my mind. Yeah. And I think I contacted you. Yeah. Asked you a little bit about it. Yeah. I, love I had that one. Stuff. Bert. Yeah. Bert came through. Oh, and that's grabbed right. one on his Verizon plan for me. Oh, and I'm yeah. I'm currently still paying him monthly for it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Dude, yeah, those things are so cool. So when you think about like, I'm so spoiled being a photographer, never having to really do film. Like, I've only been digital. So for me, it's always just been so easy to say, oh, okay, yeah, this makes sense. This just works. And I'd like to think that the artist in me would still want to do film if it was film. But I don't know. I I do feel like I've been kind of spoiled with digital. But anyway. I I had film. I had, you know, I started in paper. Oh, yeah. So it was like anything I wanted to do, it took me fucking forever. (sighs) And, uh... The iPad. I can't. I tried. About, I tried like eight months after I got the iPad. I've had the iPad for almost two years. iPad yeah. Pro, somewhere around there. Yeah. And um, I one time didn't have it, and I had to do some little quick thing. And then I was like, "Wait, where's the back button? <laughs> um, how do I cut this in half and make it symmetrical? Where's the symmetrical pen? It's just so <laughs> stupid." And and it's then not. I had to a layer. Yeah. Is literally another layer of paper. Yep. With tape. So there's a tape process. There's a whole, you got to go get the paper. Yeah. And it's got to be less paper than the first paper that you started with. Right. Because the first paper is paper. Then you need to go over one with less paper. Right. So like a tracing paper. Transparent, right? Go over that. You need tape. You got to tape. You got to align. You got to get tape. Oh. And then if you mess up one of those lines, there's no arrow that moves it back. You have to peel it off. To start again, you know? So uh, <sighs> everybody could moan and complain about that but um for certain things it's just way easier Dude. especially sketches and under sketches and if you want to do a whole few sketches in it and then you want to print it out i know uh, like steve does that at fts and yeah. jody does that as well um i'm pretty sure even rock does it i think george just has one yeah and he just swears swears at it every <laughs> now and then. Like, fuck you technology <laughs> <laughs> um, but you could even do it that way. I'll yeah. do the whole process, just start to finish on there. All digital. And then I'll just press a button, and it goes to a computer. And it's done. And then I take it from a computer and print it. Oh, okay. Really and then easy. and then you have your stencil. Yeah. That's dope. And I'm like, here. Here you go. Done. Done. Cool. <laughs> There's no tape involved <laughs> at all. It didn't take me three hours. We're all set now. Uh, um, that's crazy. Yeah, I love technology, dude. Uh, I'm going to do, do formal intros. Um, so... Welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Walter. This is the Steve Walter Photo Podcast. Season one, everything is art. And like I was telling Mike, that's just there. So in case I change my mind six months from now, I could call it something else season two. Um, First of all, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Tom. Tom Lavery is the guy who recorded the intro music. Um, So he's got an album on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you get music. Uh, Check him out, Tom Lavery. Um, Love you, baby boy. And I also want to give a shout out to my Patreon sponsors, Zach and Melissa. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and and what I'm doing and allowing me to kind of stay motivated and create this stuff. Um, If anyone is interested in contributing to my Patreon page, it's patreon.com slash Steve Walter Photo. You got to keep everything branded Mm. nicely. And, And today we have with us, introduce yourself, Miguel. Michael Mandanisi. Yeah. Man needs no introduction, but we'll do an introduction anyway. <coughs> yep. Um, so, Mike, you, I mean, I've known you, and I was thinking about this when I was showering this morning, so I was thinking about wow. you in the shower. I like that. I've known you since I moved to Stratford, which was second grade, and I've, I've known who you were. Now, you probably didn't know me because I went to school with your sister, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I knew who the little brother was, right, <laughs> since, since I was in second grade. So how old is someone when they're in second grade? 
What age is that? Is that like seven? I think so, right? So that means I've known who you are for 30 years. Wow. I'm 37. That sucks. Oh, no, it doesn't suck. It's actually kind of cool. <laughs> like, I like being 37, but <clears throat> I'm not 37 yet. May, I'll be 37. May 4th. My, my birthday is Star Wars Jeez. Day. May the 4th be with it you. It just always gets overshadowed by people just... Just caring about Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's so lost on me, dude. I don't care about Star Wars. Star like, Wars, Steve Walters. Weird. Right. There's SW? a connection. There's SWs? <gasps> Oh, I never put that together. Mm, put it oh, together. Oh, that's pretty good. See, recently, um, <laughs> some friends of mine have a podcast, the Major Nerds Podcast, okay. M-A-J-R-N-E-R-D-S, for you guys. Um, and they've been talking about Star Wars, so I kind of got more and more motivated and kind of uh, just excited about Star Wars. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'll be 37. Never seen it. Never? never? Uh, <gasps> yeah. You know what? So what? Yeah. Big deal. I can't get into it now. It's a sci-fi movie. I feel movie. like maybe if it happens organically, but I can't just sit down and be like, I'm going to watch it from all over the place because they go all over the place, right? Uh, I, I watched them, so only it was like three years ago that I actually really watched them. And I watched them in the release order, which I know some people will tell you. Like, dude, some people go so deep with this. Like, if you want to be inspired this way or this way, there's different sequences that you're supposed to watch. Nope. I just watched them with the way that they came that's out. That's how I, if I was going to, that's how I would watch them. Yeah, that's it. Um... So yeah, dude, I've known who you were for 30 freaking years. That's crazy. Go, go uh, Whitney Wales, right? Yeah, baby. <laughs> it's the same situation because I knew of you as John's older brother. Right, so. I was older brother. Same. Yeah, that's so funny. And we crossed paths like a whole bunch of times. Yeah. But I don't think it was till super, well, probably in the last 10 years that yep. we connected just way closer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... Um, you are a family member of FTS Gallery. I am. Right? A uh, tattoo artist, um, artist. And that was actually even something that I didn't realize that was a part of George, right? Because I've known George about the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't realize that you guys were artists. I just didn't know because how would I have, right? Because I wasn't in your class. Like, I didn't see you drawing stuff. And, yeah. and so for me, in my mind, like, art was always, like, everything, right? So was it the same way for you growing up? Like, when you were a little kid, were you into drawing a lot? <coughs> I used to do these wacky little cartoon characters when I was young. Yeah. But that's really it. Yeah. I didn't really I didn't really do anything else but draw these little wacky cartoon characters. I still do them. D do you? Yeah, they're really funny looking. They're no different from when I was like that age. How you funny know? is that? Um, I didn't really get into like really wanting to like do art or have it even be like a thought in my mind until I got like my first tattoo. Oh, yeah. When was that? I was 17 years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So a good amount of time. Yeah. I got a sick tribal band yeah. on my ankle. Yeah. Not filled in because I couldn't handle it. Oh, wow. It was my ex-girlfriend's initials in the middle. Oh, wow. Because yeah. I couldn't handle I love that. And yeah. now, <laughs> dude, <Yeah. laughs> the definition of handling yeah. I'm actually on skin. I'm actually worse at getting tattooed nowadays than, you know, back then. But really? there was this period from like 19 to 24 where I just like got tattooed and we sat and hung out and bullshitted and made fun of each other yeah. and I didn't care and yeah. I can't do it anymore. No. It's, like, it's 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to sweat and swear the whole time. Oh, I'm just not, dude. I'm really bad at getting tattooed nowadays. I, you know, I haven't gotten one, I mean, shit in over 10 years. What was it? 99, 2000. Damn. Yeah. That was the last tattoo. I've got two just on my arms. 99 is what you're saying. Yeah. Cause that's a long time ago. It's 2018. No, wait. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> No, it must have been 2000, because it was when I was down in Florida. I moved down to Florida. Damn. And, yeah, it was 2000, and then I moved back in 01, so it was in between, yeah, 2000. So, 18 years. Wow. Damn. So, part of that, the reason I bring that up is because I didn't handle it. I almost passed out on the first one, <laughs> right? Like, I, got, I, I told the dude, and the guy's name was... Um, Scary Larry. Scary Larry. He was down in, uh, <laughs> he was, because I was living in Gainesville, but he was in Jacksonville, Florida. We drove down because some dude that I worked at with the restaurant said, oh, I know a guy in Jacksonville. Let's oh, go. He'll that's... do it real cheap. So we show up there. <laughs> oh, dude, it was so dumb. Uh, we show up there. Like, my parents would have hated me for doing this. I show up in some dude's house. Oh, no. His name's Scary Larry. Why is he called Scary Larry? Because he's colorblind. Okay, cool. Dude, give me a color tattoo. And he does. So his wife is there as his assistant, and he says, give me purple. And she's like, here's purple. Like, here's the trust in saying that this is the color that it should wow. be in there. And then I didn't realize until later that colorblindness isn't really as, as severe as I thought. Like, I thought this dude couldn't see color at all. It's like, yeah, no, yeah, he yeah. just doesn't see some colors yep, the same yep. way I do. Anyway, um, I'm telling the guy, I'm like, hey... 
like I'm getting kind of lightheaded. Uh, oh, what? And he's like, all right, dude. He stops. He's like, put your head between your legs. Just sit there and breathe. And I was like, what is happening? He's like, you're about to pass out. Hold on, don't. And I'm like, okay. And I didn't. So I was like, yes, success. And then for the next, you know, hour, I was in the most pain that I've ever been in ever. <clears throat> and it's not the Right, and I'm sure that you know this, or you have all these conversations, right? It's not the needle into the skin. That doesn't hurt. I mean, it does. It does. It hurts. But what hurts is when someone's wiping oh. on an open wound Oof. repeatedly, because you got to get the blood out of the yeah. way, right? you yeah. got to get the ink and the blood, and it's that. And you can't do that, like, gently. Although I'm sure there are some guys that kind of have a soft hand and a hard hand, right? I like to think that I have a soft wipe. You do? A yeah. soft wipe, yeah. I think I have a soft wipe. <laughs> nice. I think um, people go harder, but... I think I have a soft wipe. A soft wipe, yeah. right? Because you want you want your client to be comfortable, right? Yeah. You don't want to just. I mean, granted, I know, you got to do your job. I know how it feels. Oh, I hate it. That was the worst part, man. That was what I remember. So, so long short, right? Is that I haven't gotten a tattoo in eighteen years because I remember what it feels like to have a freaking wipe. I think that that's why people get tattoos because they forget. <laughs> they're like, because so many people sit down and they're just like, God damn it! It's like, like every hurts. time I sit down and get one, I'm like, why? And how? How do I do this to people all day? And why am I doing it to myself right now? So. Yeah. Oh, man. So so you were, so you're growing up, you didn't get into art until you were 17 because you got a tattoo, right? And yeah. then you were really inspired. At that point, were you like, dude, I want to be a tattoo artist? Or was it more like, yo, art is, I'm, I'm kind of into this now? No, it was just a little speck of, um, I don't know how to describe it. I just, I knew I wanted, I got a tattoo and then I knew I wanted to get tattooed. Like I wanted okay. to be... I wanted to um, be covered, so I started that um, from, like, my arms. I started my arms and legs because they were yeah. out all the time, so I wanted to be covered. So that's when, that's when that happened. Um, but as far as wanting the tattoo, I didn't really want to start tattooing until I started living with Chris Finalis. Oh, okay. So that's what happened. I met Chris um, through a friend of mine who got tattooed by him, and we got tattooed. And then I set up an appointment for every Monday or Tuesday, once a week with him. Whoa. And I would jet down. He would stay late. Uh, Shelton Tattoo closed at 8. And I didn't get out of work in Norwalk till 8. Ah. So he would stay late and tattoo me for like two or three hours every Monday or Tuesday. Damn. I just started filling up my arms and my legs. So you literally were like, yo, I have this goal of being covered in tattoos. Mm -hmm. I'm going to commit once a week. That's nuts. Yeah. And I mean, at that point, once a week, you're, you can, you're not doing big stuff, right? Because No, that... we were doing like all these little, it's like everything that's on my arm, just like little traditional, like, you know, hand-sized pieces Okay. everywhere. Yep. And, and traditionally usually took mean... around two or three hours, you know? Okay. Um, do you mean like, is it a Americana? Is that the traditional? Yeah, American traditional. Or, or, it was or like, American traditional. Yeah. Not, Americana is a freaking espresso <laughs> and water. Yeah, it was, uh. it was a <laughs> venti American traditional. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you uh, just put that right here. That's yeah. a nice spot for that. But it was like a extra foam in the early two thousand, you know, the mid to early two thousand. So it was like traditional ish. Okay, you know, like roses. That sort and, of hybrid. Yeah, um, it or, wasn't like straight on traditional. It's all right. Chris's take on that. Because when you so. think of traditional, right, I think of immediately Sailor Jerry. Mm -hmm. Like he's the guy. He's yep. the go-to. Yep. Um, you know, the guy that makes the rum. Um, <laughs> I, I trolled that. And he's in there <laughs> making the rum. Yeah, he's, he's, he's making rum anymore. No, no, that's it. <laughs> I want that American. Can I get the bottle of rum right here? That's the a traditional American. Um, okay, cool. So little bits, week at a time, and then you just slowly start getting sleeved, right? Yep. That's what you call it, half sleeve, yep. full sleeve, yep. and then your legs too. Sorry, Wait, are legs those called sleeves? That. What do you call your legs? Yeah, you get, same thing. Yeah. It's just if sleeve. You're covering. I mean, they're just tattoos on your legs. Because this makes tattoos. sense, right? Because yep. it's a sleeve. You wouldn't call this a pant though, right? Oh, uh, no. Okay. I'm, I'm looking for a full pant down Can I do like leg. a half pant? <laughs> I'm, doing a, I'm doing a quarter <laughs> pant today. <laughs> Can we do like a, wait, you remember culottes? Remember that no, from the 90s? No. Culottes, I think, or, or jorts. jorts. No, jo jorts were jean shorts. Mm -hmm. What am I thinking of? Culottes were, my sister had them. <laughs> culottes? What was a culotte? That was like a, a skirt and, a, and shorts? I can't remember now, dude. I'm all over the place. But what am I thinking of? The Capris. Can I get capris. like a capri? That was a long way to go for a stupid nothing <laughs> joke. Can I get like a capri? You guys do capris? You know, and um, you said skirt and... Um Elementary school, so back to uh, Eli Whitney. Yeah, they um, they did like a time. There was like this. They would do a time where boys can wear shorts. You couldn't wear shorts to a certain date or something like that. You had to wear long pants. Oh, and me and George were so bummed about it 
that we were going to protest by wearing skirts to school because the girls could wear dresses and skirts all year Stop long. Stop it. You yeah. guys wore skirts. I just wanted to add that. That's just, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You won't let me wear shorts? Fine. Yeah, we were going to protest and wear skirts and see if you know we can get away with it because it was hot. Girls, girls could wear it. Right. Know, it was like April. It was oh, like, okay. It was like you're saying. mid-April or end of April or May and they're still like, you can't wear shorts yet. And I was like, I am dying, guys. Right. I'm, I'm sweating. Sweating. Let that be on my parents. Don't 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 yeah. tell me I can't wear shorts, dude. I'm overheating. Yeah. Let my mom say, "Hey, don't wear shorts. It's that's ridiculous. It. It's freezing yeah. out." And that was the, that's the beginning of the new world order. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you and George in skirts. <laughs> uh, I feel like there needs. See now in my mind, I'm like, oh, I have to take a photo of the two of you, or just Photoshop, <laughs> or just do something with the two of you wearing skirts, like protest, dude. What? Yeah. Back in back in what was that? Late '80s, probably. Yeah, we, I was probably like at eight to. 10 or something like that, you yeah. know, somewhere in that age range. Ah, oh, that's nuts, dude. Yeah. Um, dope. So, so from there, tattoo artist, right? I'm kind of circling back. Tattoo artist. Um, so you've been working at FTS for how long now? Almost five years. Five years. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you have, so your style is, here's what I love about FTS is that when I talk about FTS is that I talk about the, the individual artists, and it's not the whole place, right? Because everyone has their sort of unique style or their kind of signature, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me about your style. H how, would, how would you describe it? Um, I'm putting you on the spot, dude. No, you're not. Uh, I really like to do um, symmetrical stuff. Yeah. I like to work in lines and dots, usually. Yep. Um, I don't know, there's something about that. It's just so beautiful to me. Lots of geometry. Uh, yeah, it used to scare the crap out of me when I first started. And uh, I don't know, something just happened. Actually, when I went to FTS, I tried to limit myself. I was super afraid to work there. And uh -huh. um, so I was like, I'm just going to do American traditional flash. I just want to do traditional flash pieces. And I started doing that. And um, I don't really remember when it was, but I just started getting into um, like a uh, symmetric stuff yeah and i started doing it and people liked it yeah and i was having a lot of fun with it and it was yeah. super challenging and i just went from there and just a million straight lines and circles yeah. and that stuff is hard to do dude and it just stuck and that's usually what people ask me for now that's cool so yeah. was it more of like you were just kind of like making doodles for you right for mike like hey i'm doing these doodles and i i really like this geometry i like the symmetry and then it was sort of like, hey, do you want this tattooed? And and people kind of caught on to it? Or was it more of like, hey, here's this thing that I want to try. I want to break away from this flash. Um, or did it just kind of happen organically? So uh, a guest artist came through FTS, um, Jonathan Penshoff, and um, he showed me how to make like a wedge of a mandala and then put it onto Photoshop and turn it around into a full mandala. Yeah. And I was doing all that stuff by hand. <laughs> I was like drawing a, a triangle of a full mandala, and then I would um, flip it and do two of them, and then I would put that into Photoshop and flip that all around and then take the background out and then <sighs> try to th put the threshold up, and I'd have this really crazy stencil. Sometimes they you would do this triangle... And you would do all this work to get it into Photoshop and put it around and make it into a full mandala to realize it looked horrible. Uh, it all lined up, but it was just a horrible looking design. Just the pattern. But you couldn't figure it out until you made it a full one. So I wasted like hours of my time doing that. Uh, and he showed me how to do it a pretty easier way. Um, and then that was right around the time where within that year that I got an iPad Pro. Yeah. So. And then you're like, oh, yeah. this so is so much all easier. All the designs and references uh, came a lot easier and quicker. Um, and I would just post things that I wanted to tattoo. And then people would just start coming in with cool ideas that I'd be like, well, that's a great idea. That's something that I would think of or yeah. put together. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. So the, the clients bring me all these all this great so I was thinking, gonna, you know? I was going to ask you that. Is it, have you found just... In, in recent years or just in, in general, is it more of um, someone coming into you saying, hey, what do you have? I want that. Or, hey, I kind of have this idea or I was thinking about maybe something like this. Or is it a mix of like I have reference of things that I want you to sort of create your interpretation of? Or is it, hey, Mike, what do you have on the wall? Like I want that. Um, it's probably like 70, 70, 30. Yeah. There's people that come in all the time and are just like, here's a spot. Um, I like town. what you did over here. 
<laughs> do something like that. You and know? that's awesome. And that is awesome. Um, I have a bunch of stuff that I haven't done. I have a bunch of cool um, geometric designs that I have on the back burner. Yeah. I show them all those unless they're specific. But usually most of the time, that 70%, they're coming in with an idea. Okay. And, um, and I love that. Yeah. Because it's usually cool. It's usually a couple elements that they want put together. Yeah. And I <clears throat> almost never have to redraw anything. People are just like, exactly, let's go with it. Ah, uh, so cool. It makes me happy. It's always nice. And, and I, too, as an artist, like a little bit of direction. Me too. Give me, give me some direction. And then, oh, cool. Now I can, now with the conversation with you, right? Because that's, there's a huge part of that, especially being an artist, is connecting with someone, right, yep. on, in, in for sure you in a very intimate emotional way right where you're you're having conversations that kind of go deeper than just like art so deep right yeah. um i sometimes will even when i'm doing portraiture right um I, and recently i did a shoot that got real deep like like we were crying like yeah. it was crazy like it got real emotional um like family parenting stuff like that um i talked about it in one of the other episodes but anyway when you're doing that, right, because you're you're placing a piece of you on them forever. forever. Like the picture of mine, they could delete it, they could lose <coughs> it from the hard drive, yep. it's fine, yep. right? But it's, yeah, you're building a huge connection with that. So yeah. that's that's really cool that you get that little bit and then say, cool, now after this connection, I know what to do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. That's awesome, yep. man. Um, yeah, th there is something that, as I talk about when I do portraiture, there's there's the art, there's the science, but then there's the psychology. And I'm sure it's the same with tattooing or similar with tattooing, right? There's the art and then there's the science, right? Yep. The science of the actual machine, right? And like, oh, this machine's really good because it can do this. Or these needles are good here or this ink, right? That's sort of the yep. technology of it. But then the art obviously is the freaking art, man. Um, you go from this sort of traditional American to like full-blown photorealism to like what I've seen, um, what I really like is some of this, it don't, it, I mean, they all look like paintings, but some crazy like abstract stuff where it looks like they're they're tattooing to make it look like watercolor. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that stuff, yep, man. For sure. Holy shit, that is cool. Yeah, like I look cool at that stuff. and I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like it looks like a painting on flesh. Yeah. Um, so it's it's that. But then you add in that third element of the psychology of the the connection with someone. Um and, and disarming someone, right? Like someone comes in, they're nervous. They know they want something. Like you got to be like, hey, man, like I'm a soft wife. I'm a gentle wife. Like don't worry about it. It's all good. I yeah. got you, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm really good at that. And uh, George is also really good at that. Connecting. And we, we learned that from Chris. Really? So we Interesting. Took, yeah. Chris is very good at making people feel comfortable. It's huge. Um, it's, it's huge. It's, yeah. It's really, really huge because people are nervous. I'm sure people who have dealt with me a few times, they're still coming in nervous. They're doing some, I don't know, everybody doesn't hold the same, but we're definitely doing something like sacred. Yeah. Um, we're marking somebody for life with something that we came up with and that they came up with. It's this, it's this, um, this joint effort, you know? And yeah, we're about to sit down and like tear, tear through their skin and Literally. put ink under their skin. Literally. It's, it's crazy. If you think about tattooing, it's crazy. And I think, um, super important to make someone feel comfortable. Yeah, I mean, because you're going to be spending what? At least, I mean, even a short session is two hours? An yeah. hour? I mean, I guess you could I guess you could. You're going to probably spend an about hour. an hour with somebody, really, you know, from the time they get in the building. Yeah. So that even if it's something small, to the time they're leaving. Yeah. Like, even like a small appointment, it's probably about an, an hour. hour of their day in but the you building go, with us. You go up to four hours, right? Oh, for What's sure. the longest session you've done? I don't like to do to tattoo too long. I usually tattoo around three hours. Three, even um, three hours, man. Yeah, three hours is a long time. <sighs> Talk about being in someone's personal space. Yeah. <laughs> and people just, uh, it's insane, man. People just open up, you know? And yeah. The, some of the craziest conversations I've ever had were with people I don't know or right. people that I was getting to know. You know, like I've had yeah. these conversations with these people that I'm now like really, really good friends with, but I had these conversations when we barely knew each other. Right. You know? Isn't that so interesting that there is something about that I want to talk about that for a second. Cause so what I first immediately thought of were hairdressers, right? You go to get your hair cut. What's the natural transition? You end up having this conversation, right? Because it's awkward if you just sit there, mm -hmm. but some people I know just want to be like, Hey, cut my hair. Let me get out. Yep. But a lot of times, most of the time you just end up <laughs> talking to this complete stranger yep. about anything. And I think it's partially because, well, I don't know you. So I feel like I can tell you anything. You can't really judge me that hard. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I could, I could tell you anything that I want. I could only tell you the parts that I want. Like, you, you don't know me, but why would I tell you anything anyway? Like, why wouldn't I just, like, 
bullshit or just keep things quiet. But some people, like you said, will just open up and tell you so much like deep stuff. Yeah, deep stuff. Man. Personal stuff. <laughs> And there is something about that where you become like a therapist. Yeah, dude, I swear. We talk, we, we talk about it all the time, man. Um, what you just said, it's, sometimes I feel like a therapist, you know? You become it's, a therapist. People need someone to talk to. People need to talk to people. We want to do that. It's human so nature. If you sit down, it's just going to start happening, really. Um, unless you are super controlled and like maybe, stand, maybe a little standoffish. There are people that right. come in. We do our thing. I put a little tattoo on them, and they're out the door. And you they're know? good. Right. And I see them all the time. They come back. Mm -hmm. um, but there's people that I'm just like, as soon as we start, like, so what's going on with so-and-so? And, -so and how did you handle right. the whatever? And right. this, these are people I barely, I don't know them really outside of the shop, you know. Right. But I Acquaintances. Know in my head is filled with their, their life. life, you yeah. know. <laughs> like deep parts of their deep life. Deep parts of their life, you know. Uh, and that's uh, and that's the cool part about that, right? And it's, it's funny because, you know, I... I I call this everything is art and, and it's these conversations with artists that, that make me realize that we're all so connected artists, no matter what art you do, it's kind of all the same stuff. And you have that, like on some level I have that when I'm doing portraits, like I need to connect with someone. I need them to feel comfortable so that I can get them to smile. Yeah. Something as simple yeah. as dude, I need you to smile. Yeah. And like, how do I do that? Okay. I'll have a conversation with you before we even touch a camera. Now let's go take some pictures. I'll reference our conversation. You'll laugh a little, click, click, click. <laughs> cool. Done. Did my job. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but now when you're kind of coming on this level where someone's coming in, spending three hours, maybe I do a half an hour, but you're there maybe with someone for hours and you're having this deep conversation with someone, getting to know just another human, right? Just because of art, right? Like you're connecting through art. So there is something really cool. Like you wouldn't, like the cable guy comes over. You're not going to have that conversation with the cable nah, guy. Yeah. You're not going to have that conversation with your electrician <laughs> or like, you know, a guy who's coming to fix the washer. You're just like, yeah, man, is it good? No, you need, okay. <laughs> you want like a water or something? No? Okay, cool. Yep. Like you're not talking about their family. You're not getting into that. Yeah. You're just not. It's a service. Whereas like tattooing or portraiture or so many of these other arts are just that. It's, it's, it's an art. It's yep. a craft. Um, I don't know. So, so that part's interesting. Yeah. It I is. mean, I would love to have a conversation with a plumber and be like, yo, so do you guys get into the deep? He's like, no, <laughs> yeah. I want to get in and out as quickly does. as I yep. can. Yep. I don't want to bullshit with someone. Stop talking to me. I'm trying to fix this. Yeah, it's, it's a wild thing to think about. Oh, yeah. It happens to me every day, you know? Yeah. I'm about to go to a completely different place. Yeah. And you want to talk about no that? New, no, no new people, and you know? No, get dude. new information. Right. You know? Meet so, new people. So going down there, are you? is there a shop that you're going to be tattooing out of? I have a few guest spots set up right Dope. now. Yeah, awesome. I, I made a lot of contacts when I decided that we when, when we decided we were going to move down there. I just started looking up that area and cool. uh, looking up shops and tattooers and adding them on social media and complimenting their work and yep. liking their stuff and getting to know them. Yeah. Um, so I set up a few guest spots. So you were literally leveraging the purpose of social media. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's what it is yeah. for. So it's, for those that are curious, like, how do I connect with someone? Like you yeah. literally just like follow them. Yeah. You like their stuff. You yeah. see who they're following. You, you connect that's with those exactly people it. and you just sort of expand that network yeah. and, and make it genuine. Yeah. Don't, don't just go and like 50 pictures, Yeah, no way. but like, no like way. this and be like, yeah. yo, I like, I love the way you blended these exactly. colors. I'm, I'm complimenting good tattoos yep. and if they pop up in their story, my story, or, yep. you know, their stories. I'm, you know, saying something. Engaging with them. Yeah, engaging with them, which starts a conversation. And um, I've been asked to work at a, a few shops down there. Yeah. And I had to ask to work at a few shops down there. So I'm going to go try to do all that. That's work great. at those shops and feel people out and have them feel me out and see if it's the right spot. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm like super spoiled right now. So yeah. Um, FTS spoiled me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I mean, it's it's spoiled, but at the same time, like, it's earned, right? Mm -hmm. It's deserved. It's not just like someone was like, here, man, like, you don't really know what you're doing. Here's here's just this thing. It's like, no, man, th there's there's more to it than that. And I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, you're spoiled. Like, you've been in one spot, right? You've had awesome clientele. Yeah. And then now it's like, oh, I got to do that all over again. Yeah. I mean, from where I started, some of those um, shops down there are a little bit more like that, um, whereas FTS is a beautiful studio space. Oh, it's so, fantastic. Um I'm not, I'm not like, uh, there's nothing inside of me that's like, I won't work there. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm, I'll, I'll go work there, you know? Right. I just hope it would, um, be even just a little bit like the environment in FTS and right. the family orientated, you know? Right. And I guess that's really what it comes down to, right? When you think about any kind of team, um, 
in, in, in any capacity, right? Uh, especially tattooing, right? Like you need to be able to connect with those people too, right? Absolutely. You don't want to go into a shop thinking like, oh, I got to deal with this guy. Like, never. It's just you're not going to be motivated to create good art. You're not yep. going to be motivated with anything. Yep. Versus like, oh, I get to go see my family. Like, exactly. Oh, this is great. Yeah, we just Every, get to hang out. For the past five years, I've been waking up, you know, four to six day, four to six days a week, and going to hang out with my best friends. That's it. In a building and laugh and joke and yeah. draw. Yeah, just draw. Where, hey, let's all draw pictures. And yeah. Then, you know, <laughs> tattooing is, is uh, stressful and hard. Um, and the, the preparation and the day to day is really, really fun. You know? Yeah. And it's really cool to do something completely different every day. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just think about going in and doing like a, a job where you do the same thing every single day and it's got to kill a person no way inside man. you know and every day is different and it's always it's always fun and it's um always yeah. stressful yeah you know you're you're putting you're marking somebody forever so yep. that's always stressful and people are like oh i just i want to come and i have this really easy tattoo it'll be really quick <laughs> and like to you it, it might be easy and quick but like it's not it's not easy and it's really not quick and no um there's always still a tattoo you know yeah no matter what it is it's still a tattoo i'm putting it on you forever yeah i want it to be as like perfect as a human can make it and yeah so there's a lot of stress so i think that is uh, there's sort of a misconception right and i think with a lot of art there is a lot of problem solving like you you especially with the stuff that you're doing right uh the, those those shapes that geometry of like getting things to connect having things have balance yep. and symmetry with that and it's like you there is problem solving involved in that so Absolutely. like the phrases of like real quick and could you just yeah. are are my favorite could you just could you just we've talked about this before as as an artist th those two phrases <laughs> are the ones that drive me nuts real quick yep. and could you could you just i think is the number one yep. i could just <laughs> But <laughs> we have talked about this. Yeah, before. we've talked about this. Last time um, we, we saw each other, we uh, talked about this. Could you just, man? And and <laughs> a buddy a buddy of mine brought up um, that there is this there's this chart, right? That there's that there's three things that as an artist you can do. It's either um, cheap, good, or fast. Yes. Pick two. Yep. Because that's all you get. Yeah, yeah. You can't have all three. Yep. Pick two. Um, so yeah, when I think about that, um, and then even to your point of thinking about someone who's like in an office and and. Like, I couldn't do that in a cube. And I used to do that as a graphic designer. Um, but I still liked it because I was doing graphic design, right? For like, sure. that was fun. Yep. But I had no windows. That was the only gripe. If I had windows, I would have felt a little bit better about it. But I had no windows. Yep. So it was kind of weird. Um, but I also understand the, the psychology behind, well, they don't want me to know what time of day it is because they want me to just work, work, work. <laughs> All that aside, um, I think about, like, an accountant, right? I could never, absolutely never do that. You could never do that. Yep. And I'm just telling you you could never do I that never because do. I know because you're an artist yep. right and it's funny when you have these sort of different people there's just a different mind you have an artist's mind yep. right um so not only a, you know do you do illustrations do you do tattooing uh you're a musician as well yep. right yep. and when I think about that um and and even well let me ask you this too sorry I'm I'm, I'm on all kinds of thoughts right now did you, ever play, did you ever play any sports like actually play sports um and not just like little kid like oh I'll play soccer because I did that and t-ball and baseball kid soccer but did you ever like really actively engage in a sport? I mean, basketball, football. not like um, on a team or anything, but yeah. I was heavy into basketball you almost were. my whole life. Yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was thinking about this too in the shower when, um, when I think, cause I was never really into sports. There's one sport that I enjoy now, tennis. Yep. I love playing tennis. I don't know how that came about. <laughs> well, I do. Um, but it was like when I, when I was introduced to tennis, I was like, yo, this is awesome. Was like, it through we? No, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been so good. No, it was through an ex-girlfriend. Okay. Um, and what happened was I started playing. I was like, oh, this is fun because she played. And then like I was like, hey, show me how to do this. And she's like, okay. And then I was like, oh, show me how you do a topspin. She's like, okay. I was like, yo, show me how to do a slice. She's like, no. She's like, I'm not going to I was like, why not? She's like, basically because you're going to beat me. And it was like, no, man, show me. Like, I'm into it. I'm, I'm really into it. And then I started winning. And then it was like, you want to go play? It's like, no, I don't want to play. It's like, no, come on. I enjoy this. <laughs> So it was, it was interesting, but um, I play that sport, and what I think about, the reason why I bring that up is I think about someone like an artist's mind, or an, call it an accountant's mind, like that they're so separate. Yep. And I think about like someone who's like super into sports. In my mind, it's like, oh, it's, it's just because you're not into art. Because like I'm super into art, and like I don't have time for sports. Yep. But someone who's like super into sports is like, yeah, art, like whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> in my mind, it's kind of like there's this separation. Obviously, there's crossover of so much stuff, yep, right? Yep. Because you also do jujitsu, and you could call that a sport. You could, yeah. But as we were talking about before, it's definitely an art. 100% an art. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a competitive sport. 
it's it's a it's like a challenging sport. Like I, I think of it more like um, I don't want to. I mean, I'll call it a skill too. It's chess. Yep, it's, it's chess. Absolutely chess. Yeah. It's it's mental and physical chess. Yeah. It's like chess under physical stress. Yeah. Yeah. And how shitty is that when when we'll, we'll talk about the knee in the belly, right? Yeah. When <laughs> when 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 Bert's knee is in your belly and you're just like. <clears throat> Bert? And you can't breathe, and you have to say, "How do I get out of this scenario?" But how do I also not choke? Yeah. How do I physically move my body yeah. so that this no longer happens? It's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy, and you have to. Uh, Jujitsu. It's the most cliche thing to say in the world, but it changed my whole life. Yeah. Um, it is so insane. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. But Bert's neon belly, dude, is the worst thing in the world. Hashtag neon belly, and there's the one picture. Um, I want to see if I can find it and flash it right now for, for YouTube um, of him just like, I think he had his foot on someone's face and yeah. he's just like, he just looks like a beast. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, I don't want that, yeah, man. He is a Cause, beast. Because anytime I've ever trained with him, right, it's always been like, hey, let me show you this stuff. Yep. And like, he's never gone full. But like, I can only imagine if I'm another brown belt and I see that dude across mm-hmm. the mat, no, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm sorry. Can I stop? <laughs> No, I don't I tra- want that. I train with Bert a handful of times a week usually, um, and I don't want that. No. And I get it all the time. <laughs> and uh, you don't need to be a brown belt. I'm no, a blue I guess belt, not. and you're blue. Okay. gives me 100%, you know? So, yeah, you're Every time you're we, pushing. we slap hands and bump fists, I'm just, I beg him. <laughs> I'm like, Bert, I'm injured, and I got this thing tomorrow, and right. I, I don't need a, a black eye for Steve's uh, you know, podcast, right. which I do have one. Yeah. So I have a black eye from jujitsu. Fun. Yeah. Thanks. So I was like, uh, I got it on Sunday and I was like, oh, good. Cause we're doing a portrait on yeah. Tuesday. So this will be perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yep. Um, so how long have you been doing jujitsu? Uh, a little less than two and a half years. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Cause you, you, I mean, so like you said, it changed your life, right? For sure. So if we can kind of take a little step back before then, right before jujitsu, um, you used to be a heavier boy. Oh, heavy. What, what? 326. 326. was my heaviest. And you've dropped, what, like a buck 50, buck 80? Um, I don't remember the actual number. It's like 137 pounds or something like that. Damn. My lowest was 184. I, like, hover around 190 right now. Yeah. So somewhere around there. And that was, that transformation took place over, what, like two years, three years? Um, Even less. No, it was, it was a little bit longer than that. It was, I, okay. Almost four years. Four years, yeah. okay. Four. And right now, it might be even five that I've been on that. That road, that that yeah. kind of decline. Yeah. So, so then something changed before jujitsu, right? Yeah, for like sure. it was it was just a mental like, and, and not to not to make this like a, a weight loss thing, but like, I, so I I went through that, I went through a similar thing. Yep. Like I, I, you have to mentally kind of break through that. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because there's people that are potentially listening that are in a place in their life where they're like, "Fuck this! I hate this! I need to change! I need to change!" Yep. So, do you know what it was for you that kind of made that change happen? I don't really remember what switched. I just remember we bought our house, me and Katie, mm-hmm. and um, we got a grill as mm-hmm. like a, a present, yeah. like a home, housewarming present. And I was just like eating, just like eating heavy. I was eating a bunch of meat and I didn't really, at that time I was only eating like um, chicken and fish or something like that. Okay. And I just started eating everything. I gained a bunch of weight like really quick when we moved in the house. And then I just made a switch and I... For something in my body made me, I didn't do it for like any ethical reasons. I just went vegan. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was only vegan for a short period of time because we kept chickens. Okay. So um, after like two or three months of doing that, I went back to eggs. Yeah. And that's the only thing that separated me from being vegan, vegan for like a year or so. I was eating eggs. Like that was my main source of that's your protein. protein. Yeah. yeah. And that was it, man. I started literally just um, eating better. And I walked my, uh, my dog every day, Mabel, yeah. for like two miles. And then after that, I started doing like little workouts. I yep. just progressively got heavier and heavier into um, like losing weight. I lost 70 pounds in like five or six months. Yeah. And that's when I linked up with Bert. He uh, cool. messaged me on Facebook and he asked me to do his strength and conditioning program. Yeah. And I didn't really, I knew him from social media. We never okay. really met. We might've crossed paths. Um, but he just asked me, he had started this new strength and conditioning program yeah. and he asked me to come check it out. He must've seen, been watching that I was losing weight online. Just seeing it. Yeah. I went there and I fell in love with it. Oh, that's so cool. So man. then that's when I started actually 
like doing something besides hiking or at right. home workouts or walking the dog. Yeah. I, I linked up with Bert. Bert changed my whole my whole life, my whole journey. So Yeah. And that's ah, oh, that's that's awesome, man. And and it's 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 great to hear that. And so so when I think about that, right, being in a place of like recognizing like something's got to change, like I got to do something. And it's literally like making that mental commitment to say like, I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. Like I'm not going to just eat or it's, I'm going to actively like, Hey, I'm going to walk the dog. And it's like, I don't want to walk the dog. It's like, I got to walk the dog. Yeah. I'm going to walk the dog. Um, and then strength and conditioning. And then eventually neon belly. It's like, dude, I don't want neon belly, but like, Oh, I gotta do neon belly. Yeah. Like I, I, I gotta do it. Um, so, so, that, <laughs> so that's, so that's, that's fantastic. And, and, and I'll say this: I, I've been guilty where, where I haven't been going to train as much, just because, I, you know, in my mind, I've found excuses. But it has been this, this balance of us moving and, you know, finding this balance of having a, a daughter, and we'll, we'll talk about that being a dad. Um, so, so there is that kind of like. Hey, wh- where do I need to put this time? Like, I have to schedule this time yep. to do this. Um, so it's it's difficult to do that, but you find a way to do it, and then 130 something pounds later, you're in a much better place mentally and physically. 100. percent Oh, I love it, dude. Yeah, that's so good. And and it does, uh, it it really does change everything. And it's not to say that hey, if you're an overweight person, like you can't be in a good place. No, I'm not saying that yep. at all. But if you're an overweight person and you're in a place of like, hey, I need to change, like you have to just really commit to that. Yep. For, for me, it was like, I hit like, uh, you know, I hit my all time low. Like I hit my full on depression and I was like, I don't want to feel this way. Yeah. So I need to change. And then it was like, okay, cool. I literally in the apartment where I was renting, I, there, there was a pretty big driveway and I would just run laps in the driveway and my landlady. So it was an in-law apartment. So my landlady, I remember she must've looked out the window at some point. Cause the next day she's like, I saw you run in the driveway. Like, you know, there's a school, there's a high school with a track, <laughs> like right around the corner. And, and then I was like, no, I'm good. I'm just going to run in the driveway. Because for me, it was like, I'm here. Like, I don't have to go far. Like, yeah, I can yeah. just do it right here. Yeah. And then I started running out of the driveway and halfway up the block and then back into the driveway. Yeah. And, then around. and I just kept going more and more. And then I eventually started running around the town. Yeah. Um, so it was just funny that like, A, that she was just like, um, what are you doing, weirdo? Like, why are you just running in the driveway? But I was like, you don't understand. Like, this is what's working for me right now. And, yeah. and I need to keep yes, doing this. Yes. Um, so pushing through that, yeah, you got to start small. That's what you just described, you know? Yep. Um, I started just cutting, um, in the beginning I was like, I'm not going to eat packaged, uh, processed food. Uh, so yeah. I cut all processed food out and I was just eating whole food. If it came in like a box or a bag, I wasn't yeah. going to, almost anything that comes in a box and a bag. There's, you could get vegetables in a bag, you know what I mean? But right. like if it's in a bag and it's got this list of crazy ingredients, um, so that I did that and I just started walking and that just turns into, um, that'll usually, if you commit to that yeah. mentally, that'll turn into progress and then you'll research food a little bit more and then yep. you'll research exercise a little bit more. And then I started doing, you know, high intensity workouts in my basement Yeah. and then we started hiking, climbing up mountains and hiking yeah. and stuff. And then I met Bert, and then that just progressed. And then it went nuts. So, so then the jujitsu, right? Like, so let's talk about that. Like, that chess, it's art, it's physical. Like, it's um, as as he said it, and I think you even told me too. There's there's no preparation for that. You just you just get into it, and then you experience it, and yep. then you try not to throw up after the first time you do it. Because yeah. that was basically my <laughs> the first time the first time I did it. He was like, dude, he's like, walk around. You're looking a little blue. <laughs> dude, you don't know. I feel like you really don't know how weak your body is. Oh, my god. Until gosh. you try a jiu-jitsu class. Yeah. Um, you're just weak. Your body doesn't move well. No, no, you know? not at all. And, like, and that was it. It's like I realized, like, I'm slow. Like, I thought I was pretty quick. Nope, I'm yeah. not. Not when someone's coming at you right here and you need to get your body completely <laughs> rotated in position and put your knee up to block. Yeah, yeah. And you realize, nope, I had no time for that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and obviously it could be with so many other things. I want to talk about jujitsu cause we have that in common. Right. But, um, so many of those physical activities, you realize like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not suited for this. Like yeah. I, you need to condition really hard for that. And then you eventually see people that are just incredible and you're like, how on earth are you doing that? It's just commitment to yeah. just doing it over and over and over again. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with, with any other kind of anything is the more you're doing it, the better you're going to get at it. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, um, being prolific here, right? Like yeah. it's, it's a basic like thing. If you practice this, eventually you're going to not suck at yeah, it. Yeah. Um, 
S- similar with, with when I think about uh, music, right? Because you're a musician as well. Guitar, drums, drums primarily, right? Drums primarily, yeah. Um, but then guitar, and you sing too, do you sing? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. you do. Because um, you've been in bands, yeah. right? Yeah. And that with anything else, right? We're talking about working on a team. A, I got to make sure these people don't suck. Yeah, yeah. And then B, we all got to be on the same page and we got to practice, we got to practice, we yeah. got to practice. Um, since, since doing jujitsu, have you found that like your drumming is, has improved? Like, and I think about that as like physical coordination. Um, or, or do you not think that they kind of, you I, know, affect one another? I think drumming helped me out with physical coordination oh, throughout okay. my whole life with everything. And drumming was first for me. So like, yeah. um, I, I contributed to that if anything. Yeah. I could do, I could pretty much drum the same on both sides. Oh, you're ambidextrous. Yeah, with my feet as well. So like, oh. and to to learn to move these things up here, this one at a speed, this one at a speed, and like these two at different speeds. Dude, no way. I think that that was, um, if, if anything, that helped me. I don't think that there was any, I didn't get on drums and be like, oh, I think I'm way better now. Right, okay. Um, I think that if anything, the that, reason why I, started. I, I have like, um, maybe the reason why I, I don't have like, um, I can do things in jujitsu pretty much on both sides is maybe oh. because of that. Are you lefty or a righty? I'm a righty. You're a righty. Yep. Can you do stuff with your left hand? Like, are you ambidextrous in that nah, way? No, not like that. No, okay. No, just when it comes to drumming. With drumming. I can move every single one of my limbs at a different time, which is crazy yeah. to me. Um, Dude, to it's, think about. it's extremely yeah. crazy to me, man. So. so I come from guitar, right, where it's just these two. But, like, I can bop my head and I can tap my yep. foot and, like, kind of keep everything together. But with drumming, yeah, because so growing up with a brother who had drums, it was like, oh, let me try this drumming thing, right? Yep. It can't be that hard. Like, I could do, you know, your hi-hat and your snare and your bass drum. Yep. And, like, once you start, you want me to do a fill, like, <laughs> okay, maybe I can come back to where I was, yep. right? Or if you want me to do 16ths here, eighths here, quarters here, fuck you, yep. can't do it. Like, I, I can't, not without a tremendous amount of focus. I don't know. I never took um, a drum class a self-taught so i don't know anything if i've played with people and they're like all right we're gonna do this 16th over this three eighths and i'm just like listen i don't know what that means but i, I could play the drums right um so i i don't know how any of that works but i know how to play the drums and I, I think i'm pretty good at it and um uh yeah so i never nothing like that ever worked for me yeah you know? and isn't that interesting right like you're self-taught you just know how to play drums like you just have rhythm in you and yep. and that's kind of the thing when i talk to people and they're like oh, i wish i could play guitar i'm like look can you dance? And they're like, what? I'm like, can you bop your head to a beat? Yes, cool. You can play any instrument you want. Like, I'm a firm believer in that because I can't teach you how to keep beat. I can't teach you how to keep a rhythm. I can teach you where to put your fingers. I can teach you how to hit the drums. But if you can't keep time, if you can't count a four over four, <laughs> it's going to be really difficult. Yep. Chances are you probably could, right? Like, I've, I have a friend who said, like, anyone can be a singer. Like, anyone can learn how to sing. But, like, eh. Some people are just naturally good at it. Some people just have a nicer voice. Yeah, like, yeah. you might teach me how to sing, and I might know how to hit it A-sharp when I'm singing, but, like, it might not sound as good as this dude's A-sharp, yeah. right? Um, so uh, knowing that you have that, right? So, like, you were born. I'm, I'm, this is just me projecting, right? Saying, like, you were born with that in your blood. Um, and then the fact that that kind of connects into you also being an artist. Like, you're an artist. Like, in my mind, like, when I, when I think of that, right, um, it's something that I... I hope to kind of observe in my daughter Mm -hmm. and I've observed it in uh, my nephew. So Duckman's kid, uh, Nathaniel is, he's an artist. Oh yeah, for sure. He's he's a musician. Yeah. yeah. Like he's singing, he's playing all these instruments and he just, he can just pick them up. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, it's in you. Like you have it. Yeah. Like, and then I think to me, and then I think in my mind, I'm like, you're probably not going to be an athlete just because of that, that kind of extreme thought that I have of like, you're either into this or you're into this. Obviously there's a crossover, Yeah, for sure. but it seems like, Hey, you, you, in your blood, you have this art like harness that, embrace that, and and exploit that. Um, so it's cool when I have these conversations with people, and you realize that like you're one artist in one area, but you're an artist in so many other areas as well. And that's where like when I think then about jujitsu, it's like it's an art. Yeah. So so it, in my mind, right, you can kind of process it differently than someone who is an athlete. And and I don't know if there are studies there, and I'm just making this up on the fly. But in my mind, like it seems like an artist would process jujitsu differently than like. Um, a, uh, uh, a basketball player who, sure. who's like, hey, I want to go do jujitsu. Like, you might have a different thought process. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Basketball's art. I, I mean, think sports everybody are art. looks at jujitsu a little bit different. Um, uh, there's people there for way different reasons than other people. True. Um, 
but yeah, I'm, I really do see it as an art. I'm like, yeah. I have a problem. I'm like addicted to jujitsu right now. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I just like stay up all night and think about what I could have done better. And yeah. I'm like, I, I always think about it, um, that like I'm in college right now yeah. and I'm trying to get, um, and I, I'm not even focusing on a belt system any, or anything. I'm just trying right. to get as much of that knowledge just as I knowledge. can. Um, just try to be better every time I get on the mat. Right. I take it really seriously. Yeah. Uh, I made some of my closest friends in the last two and a half years, like yeah. just friends from trying to kill each other. Right. Which is insane. The, I'm trying, trying to another, choke you out or break your arm. Yeah. It's another, what we were talking about getting tattooed earlier. It's almost yeah. like the same goddamn thing. And we're, we're not talking though. No. There's no talking. We're just trying to literally kill. Yeah. You know, almost kill or break their bones. And somehow we're, I'm gaining this insane bond with them, you know? Yeah. There's some of my, I feel, I don't know, is there something about killing somebody? It's interesting, yeah. Or almost getting killed by somebody? Yeah. Uh, that just really brings <laughs> you fucking together, man. It's insane. <laughs> we well, were like, dude, I love you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, thank you for I that knee on the belly. You know? like, yeah. I'm leaving in a couple of days and I have all these uh, posts and videos and pictures from all these jujitsu people and yeah. um, just, you know, saying how much they're going to miss me and enjoy their time with me. And uh, it's yeah. really special to, to hear that in less than two and a half years. And for right. some of these people within the last six months I've met, you know, yeah. that we created such a strong bond over. It's interesting jiu-jitsu. that you say that. And, and we, when you do break it down, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hurt you. I'm yeah, trying to hurt, trying you. to hurt you. And, and I, I'm sure it's, there's something about that, that physical space barrier, right? Like you, it's very intimate. Yeah. Like it's, you know, you have crotches and areas, you know, you've got a crotch in your face and you're like, that's this dude's crotch in my face, but <laughs> you're not thinking about that, but like it happens, yeah. but then you're immediately thinking, I don't want that. So how do I avoid that? How do yeah. I, how do I get around that? And you're right. Like you're not communicating. Well, I shouldn't say you're not, you're not talking, but you are communicating for sure. Physically yeah. you, you're communicating. Yep. And then there is this constant, there is that, that struggle. Yep. And then even I'm sure at, at a blue belt level, right. I know we're not talking about belts, but at a blue belt knowledge or brown belt, like it's not, it's no longer about like, how do I try to do this? Or how do I defend this? Right. It's probably more of how do I set him up so that he thinks I'm going to do this, yeah. but then I want to leave an open space for me to do this. And hopefully he doesn't catch that. And if he does, then I'm going to go here. Yeah. And you're doing that in a split second. Split second. Man. And then you hope it works. Lately, uh, what makes me super excited is uh, lately um, I haven't, my mind's just been turning off while I've been doing jujitsu. Hold on one second. saying you turned your mind off yeah my mind's just been as maybe within like the past two or three months something clicked where i'm really not thinking about the next move you shut i'm off. just it's going there and i'm just moving with the person's body and that's it's cool I'm going into cool um in better positions for myself yeah um, and that's really cool to me because that's a i think that's a good sign that that's a huge um, milestone yeah. Yeah, so. to, to be able to, because because Bert has talked about that, like you know, when I'll have those conversations with him, and and as I'm saying this out loud, I recognize like, damn, it's been a while. Sorry, Bert, um, and 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 sorry, Steve, but it, it's he would talk about that that like eventually you won't think about this, you won't consciously think about that. Just like I'm sure, when you're tattooing, there's certain things you just don't think about anymore. You don't think about oh, I need to put this amount of ink on the needle because I know it's going to bleed or I know it's going to do that or. I know that this pattern's going to happen this way, or I'm going to have tension here. Like, you just do it now yeah, because yeah. It, you've done it for such a long time. It just happens, and then that's where you know people say it's like, oh, it's just natural, right? So that's cool that you're at that place of I'm literally just going to flow. Yeah. And like, oh, this happens, cool. I'm going to roll with that. Oh, this happens, okay. I'm going to go over here. Yep. And maybe not actively thinking, but just knowing, like, oh, I can put my hand over here and then I can grab onto this and pull yeah. over here. Cool, that worked. Um, that's freaking cool, man. It is cool. It's really and it's cool also thing. badass. It's cool, man. Like the fact that, I mean, so let's just talk about that aspect. The, the fact that not only like physically, right, um, it, it's it's a freaking fantastic workout, right? It's insane. Um, you're building bonds with people, yep. right? And then on top of that, just self-defense, man. Like yeah. if you're ever in a scenario where like some shit goes down, the fact that like, well, you typically do no gi. Right or no, or do, do you do I do both You do both. There's this okay. crazy okay. There's this crazy joke going around that I only do no gi. <laughs> okay, all right. Because I where I train full time 
yeah. Stratford Jiu Jitsu. Okay. And all the classes that I go to are gi. Oh. Um, so I host open mats to get my no gi in because gotcha. I can't make the no gi classes just for the way my schedule works out. Okay. Gotcha. So the only way that I get no gi training is, is doing with the open. my, with the ones that I created, the training sessions that I created. Gotcha. So <laughs> those are open mats and those are for whatever you want to bring a gi, you want to bring no gi. Right. It's open. Right. Do whatever you want. But I usually only bring my no gi gear so I can right. train no gi. So, you have so there's this big joke going on that I just don't, I don't train the gi, but <laughs> I train the, I you train do. in the gi like the, at the minimum of like five times a week. So, Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so then even going back to that self-defense, when you think about someone with wearing a jacket or wearing a shirt, like you already immediately recognize like I could do so many things to you <laughs> to just disable you just because you're wearing a shirt. Yeah. And you know, it's obviously you don't ever want to be in that place. Never. But, but to know that it's just kind of there and, and not only that it's there, like for me at this point, like I would have to actively think about what to do. Like even to put someone in like a, a choke, right. Um, I would have to really think about that, but I would imagine someone like yourself or obviously someone like Bert, like you just, you would just do it. Like I need to take this person down. Like there's a situation I can just do this and do it. And then Cool. All right. Yeah. And end, end of altercation. Yep. Um, and that's awesome. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. And it's like half of uh, probably, I don't, I wouldn't know the number, but I'm assuming it's up there. Percentage of people don't know jujitsu. Yeah. I have no. this advantage on them, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, because if I, you know, if I'm doing good in jujitsu, then that's with people that do jujitsu. <laughs> right. So, right. If this guy doesn't do jujitsu, <laughs> might be really easy for me to snake around his back and just put him unconscious and just leave, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. right. Just knock someone out. Right, and, and especially, you know, you would think that of those altercations, most people are going to want to do this, right? Yeah. And you're like, yeah. no, I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. going to dodge that real fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sneak around your waist. I'm going to yeah. put you down on the ground. Yeah. Now we're on the ground. Yeah. Now you're in my world. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to punch anybody. I'm not trying to get hit. Uh, getting hit hurts and hitting oh, hurts. Man. Dude, no way. I yeah. don't want to do that. Hitting hurts as well. Bert, I remember when I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, I was like, we're not going to be hitting. He's like, we could do striking if you want. I was like, nope, don't want to do that at all, dude. I have no interest in that. Yeah, yeah. No, no interest. It. So yeah, it's it's just kind of cool to know that you you have that. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to bring up, and and I realize we're running a little bit long, but I, I wanted to talk about it being a dad, right? So all these things that we've just talked about, right? Like the things that you're passionate about, the things that you've progressed at, right? The experiences that you've had, like in some way, shape or form, you're going to end up sharing that with your, your family, right? Like it, it just, and, and your kids, like it just has to become, it just will, right? So the reason I bring it up is kind of self-serving, right? Because in my mind, like I think to myself, like what do I want to teach my daughter? Like I need to actively teach her things, you know, simple things like manners, right? Yep. Cool, that's easy. Everyone, you know, you could figure that out, right? But then even beyond that, like as far as talking about art and music, like in my mind, I know, because I love this stuff, I want you to be experienced with this. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't even talk about it too, but you, you've gotten into photography as well. I have, yeah. Um, and was that, that was through jujitsu? That was through Bert, through jujitsu. Yeah. 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 So like through the, George, George, Bert. Yeah. Those guys, um, they, they changed my life. You know? and, and, and George will be on here. And I did a pilot episode with Bert, um, just kind of as like a, a like just do one to get it done. But I want to have Bert come back and, and kind of go with this format. So I definitely want to share with you guys, um, Th those people as well so yep. that we can kind of have more context. Right. But like the fact that you have all these things that kind of influence your life and make you happy, like you can't help but want to share that with, with your kids. But then in my mind, it's also like, well, I wasn't into basketball, but like I should introduce her to basketball. Like she should know about basketball. She might love basketball. Yeah. Um, because then I think about like the things that like my dad showed me. Right. And like, just naturally, like I picked up obviously his way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, he has more of like an engineer's mind. So like the science behind this stuff is yep. like, Oh, I love this stuff just naturally. Right. But because he would show me that, like I had more interest in it. Um, so it's, I guess the, it's just more of a thought, but not necessarily a question, but are there things that, that you know, you like can't wait to show your kids? Um, I think, I don't know about like showing anybody anything specifically. Yeah. Um, I think whatever you're doing in life is going to show your kids what, what to do or give them like, be there. that perspective. Uh, Willow comes with me to 
she goes 75 percent of my jujitsu classes yeah, i saw um, that she's actually. the best yeah. uh everyone loves her <laughs> um she does jujitsu that's so good um she started off with the shuffles the warm-ups and and she yeah. just goes from there my uh, one of my coaches tiago takes real good care of her and yeah he's given her some basics and she watches me so she she takes me you know she'll try to take me down and she'll roll with me and <laughs> she slaps hands and bumps fists and Dude, it's really stop. really funny um she's a riot how old is she now She's almost two and a half. Yeah. So right when I had, right when she was born is right around the time that I got serious into jujitsu. Okay. So I had been messing around with it here and there as like a form of, oh, this is good for weight loss. This is good cardio. Let me do this and that. Before the bug. Before that. Yep. Yeah. And then when we had her, I was like, I had gained the same, me and me and Katie had gained the same amount of weight. It was like 39 or 44 pounds or something while she was pregnant. And I was like, I got to get this off. I Mm -hmm. work so hard. I don't want to, I was, I was creeping back up and it's happened to me all throughout my life. You know, I'd lose weight and creep back up. But, um, I was like, I was like two forty four when I started jujitsu. Wow. And, um, like I said, I was down to one eighty four. So jujitsu is insane. And, but Willow comes with me to that. Um, she's, She's music heavy. Yeah. Yeah. She's singing. She's dancing. She's got rhythm. She could follow. She does beat. have rhythm. Yeah. So that's the one thing that I am I am actively looking for in Scarlett is, can she do this? Yep. Can she keep a beat? Because I noticed that Nathaniel, uh, Duck's kid, at a real young age, like when he was dancing, I was like, oh, he's keeping time. Yeah. He doesn't know it. Of course yeah. not. But like, he's... Oh, he's got it. Yeah, yeah. So seeing that in her has got to be like, yeah. yeah. You just got to play. You just It has to be music. You, there's no yes. way to like teach her that. Like, nope. We're going to sit here and, and play no. this. You know, you just got to put music on. It's got to be good music. And yeah. You just got to watch them. She's got keyboards. She's got guitars. Yes. Um, she's played my drums before. Yes. She'll, she'll be fine. As long as uh, you just got to just show them things. Them. You know, expose them. Just expose them yeah. to being like, hey, here's here's music. Yeah. Like, here's cool music. And it's the same thing with it's it's literally the same thing with manners. If you're a polite person, they're gonna be polite. They're you could teach know. them to a few times. You know, say thank you, say yep. please, and then yep. they understand that. And then if they see you doing it, yeah, then you're you're gonna be good. So yeah, how funny is that, man? That they really are just a, a mimic. They are. They they're, yeah. they just oh, you're doing this. Like I trust you with everything. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I'm gonna do what you do. Like yeah. why wouldn't I naturally do? what mom and dad do. Yeah. Like it's just, it's just there. Um, and then just as we were having our conversation beforehand, right? Sometimes the negative comes yeah. through with that too, right? Yeah. N- not to go deep into that. Cause I want to keep things positive at least here, but like the negative goes through there as well. So yeah. it's like, you got to keep yourself in check when they like, you get frustrated when you get heated and you're yeah. like, Nope, not in front of her. Yeah. Yep. I can't cool. She's gone. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. and then, you know, vent because you need to do that. You need to, yeah. You have to do that. And that jujitsu comes in there too. I'm just like, dude, talk about a release, man, right? Uh, yep. Literally a, a physical release a physical of like, release. I need to exert my energy, yep. my stress, yep. the BS that I have going on, but channel it through, I'm trying to break your arm. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, um, there's, there's a ton of ways to do that. And I think I've been doing that through um, working out in general for a long time. Yeah. But this is like on a whole nother level. There's this mental aspect, you know, like I could go wear myself down on a hike, right? And I can yeah. go uh, spend a half an hour, 20 minutes hitting a, a heavy bag, right? Yeah. But my mind isn't going to be really working at that point. Interesting. You know You're what I mean? Right. Like when I was hiking, You're it right. was insane. We were going up like the somewhere in Hamden. You, you're literally on the edge of the mountain over there. Sleeping yeah. Giant. There's yeah. like a, a trail that's pretty cool. Yep. And it's, uh, it's, it's tough and it's taxing. And I think right. a lot of times my mind would go into a lot of thinking yeah. about just wandering, you know? Yep. Um, I, I can't really wander in jujitsu. If no. I'm wandering in jujitsu, I'm probably going to... You're going to get choked. Yeah, get choked. Yep. There's, that, there's that no mind space where it kind of turns off, but it's not wandering. It's just, it's doing work. Right, it's it's paying attention. I just don't really know it. It's more of a the the subconscious process yeah. versus the conscious process of yeah. oh wait his foot's here my foot's here what do I need to do yeah. versus the um, I'm I'm just gonna oh I, I'm aware of his foot like yeah. I don't know where it is I'm just aware of his foot yeah. um, versus to the point of what you're making like I'm climbing up a mountain like yeah physically it's it's exerting me but like mentally like I'm thinking about like what what tattoos am I going to like maybe draw next or yeah, like yeah. I got to finish this project all oh, right I got to pay that bill I got to deal with that bs mm-hmm. because 
mentally, like, you know, you're you're just walking, right? Like, you're going up, you're climbing, like, hand, foot, hand, foot. Like, I get that. Um, And maybe for some challenging parts, right, you need to, like, focus and be like, wait a second. If I put my foot there, I'm probably going to fall. Like, don't. But then otherwise, you can go right back to it. So that's interesting that doing that jujitsu, right, you're able to exhaust and exert yourself physically but mentally, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, like, building... I'm not just only exhausting the the mental. I'm like building it back up too. So like yeah. I let all that out mentally and that was like hard. You know, there was a lot of work happening. Yeah. But there's like a reward, you know, you yeah. did it, you went and did it. Um 3 rounds in, you're insane tired, you can't catch your breath. Dude. Some dude's sitting on your chest and all <laughs> you want to do is tap cuz you, you you can't you can only get a little bit of air in at a time and it's yeah. 4 minutes into the round and you just have to like not tap. You just have to, Yeah. you have to just do something to get out of the position, try to get to a better position. The, the being under stress and problem solving is one of the coolest things ever. I'm, I do like problem solving to begin yeah. with. Same. And that's like everything that I do really it's is a problem. There. Somebody gives me a tattoo, four elements for a tattoo. I have to solve a problem of how I can make four elements work into this tattoo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's under stress too. Dude, you know, yeah. it's it's eleven o'clock in the morning and the appointment's for twelve thirty and right. I, I, I have to get this final thing out. Does it look good? Should I move this over here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. does this flow? Does this make sense? Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of I do it a lot. And um I don't know how I would be if I didn't constantly have to problem solve, problem solve. under stress. Right. You know, what would that mean? What if I just knew I had to go deliver the truck was loaded and I had to go deliver the Poland spring cases to right. A, B, C, and D, and I had to just get back to the, the company. I'm right. sure there's some problems. There's traffic and stuff like that. Sure, sure. But you have this one thing. It's already ready to go. Same you're thing. You're dropping it somewhere. Someone's signing something, and you're going to the next spot. Right. I don't know where I'd be in life if I had to do something like that, you know? Oh, that's... And I think maybe that guy, and I'm not putting that person down at all. No. Um, if he went and tried jujitsu yeah maybe then he would fulfill that area of his life where of problem solving problem solving like, oh. stress and getting out sitting in a truck six seven hours right. a day going from one spot to another he maybe get that out and feel better about himself yeah oh that's such a good point i want to end on that man cool so so um Obviously, thank you for making time because because you're moving next week. I'm <laughs> so moving this week. Th- this week, yeah. um, forty eight hours. I'm out. We- oh, this Wednesday. Yeah, literally tomorrow. Yes. Oh yeah. wow. So, dude, thank you so much, no and thank Katie. You. Thank you for letting me borrow him because um, I know you got plenty of stuff you got to do. So much um, stuff. So I I'm, I'm glad that we got to do this. Um, honored to have you on here. I'm honored to be on. It was amazing. Um, and I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll probably have visits. Uh, I don't know that we would be able to make it down to Tennessee. You might come back and do a guest spot at FTS maybe. Be, I'm just putting it out there. I'll be back in June to, to work. I'll be dope. here for like four days in June for the seven-year anniversary party. Oh, dude. Um, oh. As soon as they have the dates for that, which hopefully will be soon, Yes. Um, then I'll start booking people. And yes. I'm going to start. I'm just going to really hustle that week and try to get as many people in as I can and then go enjoy the seven year. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's going to be a blast. Um, and we'll definitely talk about that when I have George on. Um, so, so plug yourself. Where, where can, where can people find your art? Where can people find you? Um, you could find me on Instagram, mm-hmm. Mikey rocks VDC. Um, that's usually where I post. I don't really post much on, um, any Facebook or anything. So I yeah. post all my artwork on Instagram. Um, FTSgallery.com is a good place to find me sure. and my friends. Uh, I am moving, and as soon as I know where I'm going to be permanently, uh, the, all that will be linked on my Instagram as well. So, so Instagram is probably Instagram the, is like the, the best place to find me. Everyone's in, so my Instagram right is <laughs> at Steve Walter Photo. Like that, that becomes like this sort of hub now. It's funny how like you almost don't need a website because as an artist, Instagram yeah, I don't need one. currently is like where you go, and then maybe there's a link that goes to other places. Like yep. you said, you would you would link to there. Um, so yeah, so, uh, definitely check out Mike's work. Um, and again, if you wanted to, uh, contribute to, to what I'm doing here, uh, patreon.com slash Steve Walter photo, Steve Walter photo.com slash podcast is where you can find all the other information. Um, this will be on the YouTubes. Mm. Um, it's going to be on the sound clouds, Ooh. the iTunes, all that fun stuff. Nice. So thanks dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. I love you. Love you, man.